All right. It's a cloudy, rainy Saturday, but we bring in the sunshine here in Power Move with my partner in crime, Mr. Pro, the CEO, Mr. 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 Career Career Crossover. Crossover That's right. House of my man, who is an Instagram sensation. I mean, (laughs) nobody hits those buttons like my man Joel Savane. What's up, brother? It's good to be here. That's right. It is definitely good to be here, man. You know, there's a lot been happening, man, in the world of sports and entertainment. But before we even get started, could you share with folks a little bit about Pro to CEO? Because you're always just, just doing big things on the, you know, but without, you know, getting that, that recognition. So I always like to shout you out. Well, man, I appreciate it. We, we're, we're not quiet. We're just busy, man. So one of the more powerful things we've got in our midst is we, we have the honor and privilege uh, next month to be a part of the CBC, the Congressional Black Caucus. Ooh. And with that, our social responsibility as a company is to really lock in with the political climate of what a business can do. Absolutely. So we partnered with uh, Florida Congressman Al Lawson mm-hmm. uh, and Mr. Lawson and I, we're going to launch a session um, uh, for the public, but we're going to focus on athletes and artists and executives who are interested in leveraging the political space with their business to impact social uh, responsibility in their communities respectively. So we're going to have a real good, strong session. I can't that. wait. We've got uh, one of the guests I can't wait to hear is our own mayor in Miramar, Florida. Okay. Uh, Brother Wayne Messam, who is actually a dark horse runner for the presidency. So, man, <laughs> he is going to be there rocking the mic, and we're excited to have him and various other guests. But this, this, this opportunity is really – for everyone to um, look at the political landscape, look at the business landscape, and are we leveraging it good enough as minorities, particularly as well as women? Mm -hmm. Uh, Generally, it's a man's world, but we're seeing more and more change, which is really positive, but I want to see even more in terms of impact of what we can do as minorities and women. Absolutely. It's it's all about, it's about, it's all about making your voice not only heard, but, but turning that into into action and purpose, so um, I'm excited to to see Thank you know you. what what you guys are doing, yeah, man. you know because a lot of times you know when you think of working with you know professional athletes and executives, you know it's always in terms of maybe endorsement deals or you know helping them launch a company, but when you can really bring them together to discuss how we can we can make impact in the community. That's what makes it powerful because a lot of times the regular community is somewhat afraid of dealing with these politicians, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And, you know, it's part of our Sustaining Success Summit platform. You know, it's something that mm-hmm. we do quite regular where we connect around the country, bringing a platform for uh, career and, and leadership management. And this time we're at the CBC. We were there back in 2016. And now we really, with election year coming up, we just feel it's really important for us to at least be responsible and do what we can do. But, hey, I don't want to take no more time because we got a lot to cover. That's right. Um, One more issue, though, before we jump into our esteemed guest. I can't wait for you all to meet her. That's right. That's right. Powerful sister. We got some Tallahassee connections, so I'm just letting you know. (laughs) Uh, But, you know, in the world of sports, um, we saw a a, a really um, first-time deal with Mm. Jay-Z in the NFL. Yeah. And and for a lot of us – you know, we haven't seen that kind of deal go down, but there's been some backlash. Uh, and you know what? And I can't wait to hear, you know, our, our esteemed guest, Keisha Pick, uh, Keisha Boyd, mm-hmm. her perspective on that, that, especially, you know, and, and, and as a segue, let's kind of introduce, uh, you know, our audience to Keisha. You know, she is the owner and the CEO of Pickett Public Relations Group. For 19 plus years, she's been perfecting her craft and shining light mm-hmm. on individuals, companies, artists, executives, all the like, and assisting them in becoming more recognized in their respective field, awesome. whether it's in or outside the Tampa Bay area. So she's she's uh, she's nationwide. She's working on being worldwide in a minute. So this is a lady to really 
follow and if you're looking to take your business to the next level and you want that presence you know feel free to reach out to her i just want to share with you some of her clients that she's worked with author val trenda sylvia's the tampa bay theater festival the national bar association cbs radio cigars and guitars you know the super bowl super bowl nfl experience you know mm-hmm. Dealing with the Tampa Bay Caribbean Carnival, uh, the Funk Fest tour that's local here, the the Dr. Carter G. Woodson lecture series, Boule. I mean, it goes on and on. It goes on and on and on. And so we're going to kind of highlight to you, you know, the industry of public relations, how powerful it is, how pivotal it can be when it comes down to when you do decide to launch a a business. (laughs) You know, what what are your next steps? So without further ado, let's introduce. The owner, Keisha Boy. Pick I, it. I, 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 <laughs> Thank you for having me. I appreciate the opportunity to come in. Oh, I Just forgot to say it. she's a fam you grad. I am Rattler, absolutely Rattler. a fam you grad. Yes. <laughs> All day long. Awesome. And a proud member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, there go, there go the Jay Z dynasty right there. <laughs> no, 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 no. That is not the dynasty. That is Delta. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. To all my Delta lovely ladies out there. Yes. Yep. Thank you for having Wonderful. me. I appreciate it. Yo, thank you for coming on. We're so excited to be here. And you, we've got you in Tampa because we know you're um, big time between Hollywood. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah and I'm Miami. Just trying, and I'm just trying. And I'm like, Tampa? I'm doing. Let me Tampa? not say that. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Well, you know what? Let me tell you. Mm-hmm. Um, I enjoy being able to, to travel and do what I need to do for my clients. But Tampa is my home base because awesome. mm-hmm. this is where my village is. That's my parents right. are here. Mm-hmm. My in-laws are here. I have a three-year-old. And people are like, oh, you need to move back to L.A. Or you need to move to Atlanta. I'm like, listen, as long as a plane will fly, that's right. I'm going to stay in Tampa. Be because wow. my village is here. And yes. I don't care what anybody say. You need a village when you have children. Mm-hmm. So I have to stay where my village truth. is. That, so. is, that is the truth. Well, Tampa, y'all I'm stuck a, with me for now. I'm going to amen that because I got four of them. Oh, wow. So, yes, bless your heart. No, and uh, I have one at every level. So, okay. yes, I'm with you on that. Absolutely. Got to have your support. So, go ahead, Joe. Go ahead, Matt. Well, I was going to say, you know, being that you talk about the village uh, in Tampa, and mm-hmm. Tampa's close to home, tell us a little bit about your story and, and how did you choose public relations as your career? You know what? I like to say public relations chose me mm. <laughs> because I went to FAM and I wanted to be a doctor. Okay. Why? Because I'm like, doctors make a lot of money. <laughs> right? That's right. And I was like, I'm going to be a doctor because I can make a lot of money and blah, 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 blah. And when I got there my freshman year, I was like, I don't care about the, I don't care about chromosomes. I don't care about bacteria. (laughs) I'm barely passing this chemistry class and this bio lab. I'm struggling. This is not for me. I am not passionate at Mm -hmm. all. Mm. Right. And I also learned that when you become a doctor, you also, unless you are grant and, and, and a fellow all the way through, you come out with so much debt. And I said, you know, this is just not working. That's not going to okay. be So I said, well, I'll try business. All right. This has got to be cool. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, and SBI, they have to wear these suits three times? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's it either. <laughs> so you know what? It was a friend of mine. His name was Paul Chance. I always give him props because he really awesome. did Shout introduce Paul. me. Paul right. Chance in Miami. What's up, Mr. 305? All right. And Paul did this event called the Gobble Wobble. What? And the gobble wobble. <laughs> the gobble wobble. The gobble wobble was an event that we did every around like the week before Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. where we did a 5K run walk for families, raise money, partner with Publix mm-hmm. and things like that, to give families food that didn't have food for Thanksgiving. Love that. And so he was like, "Hey, Keish, um, I did it one year, and then the next year he was like, I'm graduating, and I need you to take it over.' And I was like, "I'm oh. not doing that. I don't know what I'm doing." He was like, "You're fine. You will do it." And the year that I took it over was the fifth annual, and we had so much. Press, we had all kinds of coverage and partnerships, and and I said, okay, whatever this was, th- whatever this is, right, that's right. what I want to do. Okay, because it was natural, it was fun, I loved it, and that's how I chose public relations. So I jumped into the the school of journalism um, at FAMU with a concentration in PR, and I've never looked back. And that that's school right. is, is world renowned. Yes, it is. It's a uh, journalism program. I know firsthand because my wife got a minor in ah, it. So she's a, can, a so great lady. Kinda halfway go, <laughs> <laughs> go all the way. But yes. but so, the 
Tallahassee connection, the FSU fam. You connection. Let me tell you, there is nothing like FAMU, and it's nothing like my J School family. Um, shout out to Georgia, who's who's listening on live too. <laughs> okay. um, and I love it because. It's such a connection. It's always, uh, I mean, you're one step away, one person away from what you need. Mm -hmm. And we use that. You know, when we say family, we mean that. Family. Oh, okay, love like, that. We Great. tap into that network. So I'm so very proud to be a part of, be a part of the J School family and be a part of the PR family. That's excellent. Excellent. So in terms of your PR, we're switching gears here. Yep. Um, for, for you, PR has been now something you do all the time mm -hmm. and how important is it like you know for you to as a business you know as a business owner to have PR as a part of your business strategy in terms of when you are trying to bring clients on mm -hmm. what do you tell them because a lot of people may not look at having PR as a part of what they do as a business why would you need that and why do you make sure that your clients you know get the very best that you give them you know what? Um, I, as I've grown in business and and learned things about people and mm -hmm. businesses, right? Mm -hmm. I've learned that I have to assess where they are in business, right? Because a lot of times, people often put PR last. Right. They don't think yeah. about yeah. incorporating budgeting for PR mm -hmm. or marketing in the beginning of their planning for right. the business. Right. And it's an afterthought sometimes. Mm hmm. Or it's not until something bad happens where you're like, oh, my God, I need somebody to handle this crisis. Right. But um, one thing I do with businesses or anybody that I want to be a potential client is let's assess where you are. Right. Let's figure out what you really want to do with this and if PR is necessary now mm -hmm. or later mm -hmm. or before you launch. Like there's a whole thing that we can go through to kind of assess where you need to be. Mm -hmm. um, I tell business owners any type of business can stand for some some type of branding or right. PR and marketing. Mm -hmm. And I also tell them the difference between them, right? So right. Um, a very simple answer is PR is what we, we pray for. It's earned people. You want people to naturally talk great about your business. Marketing is just the money. Like you got a budget because you want to be on the front page of this. Okay, we can, we can buy that space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's no influence. But, you know, I tell people all the time, when you get mail and when you get something in the mail – and it's an ad, you might not look at it, right? right? But if you flip open your newspaper and there's a whole article about this company and the good that they're doing, then that's more reputable. You you, you take that in a certain way. It's a different feel, right? Mm -hmm. So I think all businesses um, at some point need some type of PR. They absolutely need branding throughout the whole thing. Mm -hmm. But they might not need a PR company all the time or um, throughout, but they, they definitely need to be touched somehow with some PR and branding. I, you know, I love what you said, the importance of an assessment, because mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times when people do their business plans, they don't fully see the big picture, right? right. They don't mm -hmm. see uh, the importance of having a team. And, you know, when you mention doing the assessment, um, you know, could you share with us a little bit about how your your simple ingredients Oh, okay. The, the, the five C's, how does that now, so. work in terms <laughs> of... of the assessment, because I think to me that's a major um, part of of an awakening for a business owner. Right. So I mean, <clears throat> PR doesn't have to be difficult, and it can be simple. And I say simple with a C. And I say this, and you know, with all my clients, I have five C's, right, mm -hmm. to my to my recipe. That's communication. You right. have to be able to talk to each other. You have to be able to tell me everything that might be going on, whatever you're thinking. Um, a lot of times, I, I do a lot of crisis communication mm -hmm. um, for companies and, and clients, and I'm like, I need to be like your lawyer. Right, right. Like whatever you need to tell your lawyer to make sure you stand on these streets and you know whatever <laughs> <laughs> you stand That's out right. of trouble. Stand I need trouble. to be. I don't want to find out things after the fact because mm -hmm. then I'm reacting. You know, I'm, right. I'm reacting to it versus being proactive. Mm -hmm. So being able to communicate, mm -hmm. being able to be creative. Right. So we have to be able to create and, and do those things. Having confidence. Mm 
Okay. Um, in each other. So we're just going to pause right there. Because okay. Esteban, so we went to the three C's, but yep. we're going to revisit these five C's we again got, we gotta get right after two. the break. <laughs> we got to get these other two. But once again, this is Power Moves power with moves, celebrities, celebrities, athletes, athletes, key influential executives, share how they make so money, money, how they attract power, power and how they earn respect. respect. This is In Touch Radio, reality radio, where everyone is a star. Like Call in Esteban. 813 444-9588. Esteban, take it away. Take it away, brother. Junior, your motivational guru. This is the DLD Motivational Moment. One darn second. America since 2017 is suffering from a serious hiccup. 9-11 is seriously overused in a distasteful manner. Every day the cops are calling on an innocent, innocent person of color. It amazes me that America has come down to this. A person of color becomes a person of interest. Waffle House, the dorm, Starbucks is a few. This is not the lunch counters, sit-ins of the 1960s. 2019, harassed simply for being black and proud. Hold on one darn second. This has been the DLD Motivational Moment. Pre-order my new book, Motivational Moments, at DLD28-2002 at yahoo.com or 813-394-5875. Hi, this is Dr. Veronica Walters, also known as Dr. V, the head of school at the Walters Academy for Entrepreneurship, a place that we like to call The Way, where we're educating today's youthpreneurs to be tomorrow's billionaires through social entrepreneurship. Do you have a student who's bored, frustrated, gifted, inquisitive, creative, business-minded? Then maybe you need to check The Way out. Listen, we have an educational platform that allows for individualized instruction. It's strength-based, project-based, and designed to help your students become the absolute best they can while starting their own business and being an entrepreneur. If you're looking for something different and you need to find a more excellent way, then you need to visit us at The Way. That's The Way, www.thewaetampa.org. Or you can call us at 813-603-7923. We look forward to showing your students a more excellent way at The Way. We back. back. So we're back with Keisha Boyd, Keisha Boyd with the <laughs> Pickett's Public Relations Group. And we were talking about her simple way with a C on how she helps her clients really take us to the next level. So it's the five C's. So yes. uh, let's kind of go back again mm-hmm. from the beginning and yep. then, and then uh, and conclude with that. So, you know, what makes... Uh, a client really becomes successful when it comes down to dealing business with you. So my five C's, just to recap, communication, creativity, um, confidence, compromise, Mm -hmm. right? Mm Because you might not see everything. I might not see it your way. You might not see it mine, but we got to come to an agreement. All right. You know, kind of push and pull. And then the consistency. You have to be consistent. You can't start one thing and then say, oh, gosh, I'm going to drop off. No. Like I tell people, especially when they're coming on new clients, new clients, I need six months at least. Right. That's my minimum. Mm-hmm. Because by the time we get in a groove and things start happening, we can't just stop and right. drop off. Because a lot of times people make that mistake um, when that fulfilling them, you know, take taking on the, the, the time, taking the time that it needs to to really invest in a good PR campaign to see the results of it. You know what I mean? And Absolutely. see if, it, if it's if it's working or not and where you need to make changes and shift. So I definitely require a company to say, commit to at least six months. Well, it's interesting, too, because, you know, from a business perspective, you know, you you, you analyze sometimes in quarters, right? Mm-hmm. So there's the first quarter, second quarter, whatever quarter that you participate in. You know, you can't just kind of drop a campaign after just one quarter. Right. You need at least two. Maybe. To maybe. Four. Yeah. Two to four, really. Well, mm-hmm. it's really a ramp up time. Mm-hmm. You, right. You have to expect that you got to get your house in order. Correct. You may have to do some resetting. You may have to go and settle some things before you can really get your client going. Correct. Because I'm sure you've gotten a, a couple that needed a to go to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> got to do full surgery. Full <laughs> right. surgery. 
then come back out and get them in the rehab. Oh, gosh. Oh, my man. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, so this is great into my question. So what does it take to build a strong PR firm like yours? You know, what challenges? I mean, tell us a story. Like, uh, you know what? What you had to overcome and face uh, to develop your business. What was one of your biggest challenges or clients? Well, um, we don't have to know names. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I think I, I, it's, it's better for me to speak on ex, on the experience of building the business, sure. mm-hmm. sustaining it, and yeah. and, and, and that that requires consistency as well. Right. Um, right. I think when I started this business in 2003, I was young, I was hungry, I was like, I can do this, blah blah blah, because I'm a, I'm a go getter. Like I'm not gonna wait for it to come. I'm gonna go get it. You right, know, type right. of situation, mm-hmm. and. Um, I, I had the opportunity to work with great names, great brands early mm-hmm. on and continue to do so and up until now. Right. I'm working on Oprah's show. Like, this is awesome, right? right I'm right, like, right. I'm about to make it, you know? That's right. But um, <laughs> I'm just like, I just need her to touch me. <laughs> and she, you know, and I'm going to be golden as, as everything that she does. Touch. But but anyway, the same, you know, the challenges I probably had to overcome in the beginning was saying yes to everything mm-hmm. because I needed the money. Right. You know what I mean? And I think that's a pitfall for for business owners in general is, you know, we we eat what we kill. Right. 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 And if you don't, if you, if you don't, you don't don't eat. eat. And a lot of times, and what I've learned over the years after losing plenty, like losing Mm. tangible things, because my passion, while it was so strong, it wasn't enough to pay the bills sometimes. Mm -hmm. And um, I had to learn a few things. One, and I tell young people this all the time when I'm talking to them and, and trying to mentor or whatever, you know, if you can get a base, a financial base, right, where all you have to do is maintain it, mm-hmm. business will be better because you're not so stressed and you're not like, oh my God, if I don't close this deal, if I don't get this client, I'm not going to pay my bills or, mm-hmm. oh my Lord. And it's stressful. Yes, you can't yes. enjoy the business. You can't, you just cannot enjoy the business like that. If you don't have someone being able to support you, if you're married and your your spouse is taking the burn of the bills right now while you're building mm-hmm. or your buy, you have to, you know, doing it over again because mm-hmm. I didn't shut my business down, but I had to, um, I had to one learned that I wasn't a failure when I failed. Right. Right. If that right. makes sense. Yes, right. Make Cause sense. I was like, Oh my God, like I, I just lost, you know, whatever. And I, or I can't pay this. I'm like, I'm failing. I'm not doing well. Right. And I was like, you know, you got to learn what is the lesson in this? Like, mm-hmm. what is that you have to do? So one, you know, my takeaway from my, my experiences, um, you have to set yourself up to be, you know, as successful as possible and not as stressed. I was working a full time job, mm-hmm. and I've been there. And I still do. Right. I still have, you know, my my, my gig that I do. Now, a lot. Of, I think a lot of times people. I saw a post just the other day that people are like most of the entrepreneurs you love most still have a full time job. Mm-hmm. There's nothing There's wrong no, with that. Not. It's income, right? right. It's income, and yeah. it allows you to pour into your business until you can get your business to c- cover your whole, you know, whatever. Oh, yeah, uh, correct. And then, and, and when you have factors like a family. Entrepreneurship is also something you have to reevaluate too, right? Because you got insurance, mm-hmm. you got all kinds of things that you have to consider. Mm-hmm. So, you know, overcoming the fact that I had to say yes to everything because I needed the money. Now I'm able to say that's not aligned with my integrity. Mm-hmm. That's not going to work for me. Right. Like I can't mm-hmm. support or, you know, take a client on because I need the money, but I don't believe in what they're talking about. I don't mm-hmm. believe in what they're selling. I don't believe in this music that they're putting out. I can't support that. Right. So, right. but it didn't, that wasn't the beginning. Like I had to be able to grow to that. You right. know what I mean? Even if it was, you know, but growing enough to say no, learning to say no. Okay. Was a, was a, was a hurdle for me because like is that no is turning down money. Yeah. Right. Cause you're walking away. <laughs> you're walking away. Yeah. The very thing you yeah. need. Cause but believe it or not, you know, people are like, hey, I got my integrity, but sometimes you got to have that bill paid. And yeah. you don't want to <laughs> compromise. You don't. You don't. But you also find yourself in a precarious position where you're like, okay, I'm going to have to shut this business down. Or at least it walk away not, or, or yeah. take a break and reevaluate right. and, and, and figure out how to make this work. Right. Um, right. So what's interesting is um, could you unpack a little bit more what you mentioned about the financial base. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about financial base, are you speaking about the base of clients that align with your values or are you talking about the financial base in terms of your your family or your core or whatever case may be? I am speaking, on my experience, um, having something to stand on, Mm -hmm. 
having money in the bank mm-hmm. that you can say, okay, I can live off of this for six months. Okay. All I got to do is maintain this six months and just keep building and keep building off of that. That's key. Um, because that's, a, that's an important uh, point to make because, you know, a lot of times when people are starting up a business and I think well, what makes you formidable is that you can speak to from a startup type perspective mm-hmm. to let people know, like, listen, if you don't have your six month savings, you don't have it in the budget, you can't mess with me. So mm-hmm. <laughs> get right. your money right. right. <laughs> right. No doubt. You know, I yeah. understand where you're coming from. You know, get your hustle on and get that right. And then we can, you know, move on from there because you're really not ready yet. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, but that that's for I mean, for clients and personally as a business owner, too, mm-hmm. you know, just making sure that, you know, you're good right. and you're not like and I know people are like. Oh, I started my business with five hundred dollars. Now I'm a millionaire. That's cool, but that's not often. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a you I'm know a, that's a unicorn. Right. right. That's well, not, that's not only a unicorn. That's a, that's a nice story. Right? It is a nice story. <laughs> Everybody started off with using credit cards, five hundred dollars. You know what? And you know we all in the entertainment world, so we know that's that PR story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. there's a there's like five hundred. Mm-hmm. But that was five hundred, like many, many years exactly. ago, <laughs> right? Yeah, right? That, yeah. So, so that's the the funny thing about it. But you know, I think also a lot of what I loved what you just said, Keisha, was the belief. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, there's power in belief, right? Absolutely. So, kind of talk to us about what makes you, you know, because that's one of the key missions and mantras of your company is you're not going to mess around with a client unless you're passionate about it. Yep. Passionate about that client and belief in them so mm-hmm. could you share with us how does that you know work well for you and how has that worked well well for you? I, I think it goes back to the integrity part mm-hmm. and reputation i am a rep i'm a i'm a pr company but i still have to maintain my reputation right mm-hmm. and my brand right mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. i can't be tangled up in some mess right. i just can't be <laughs> because now i gotta play crisis communication for the crisis communicator like <laughs> this is not what i'm supposed to be doing you know you can't yeah and then that more, you know and so i oh wait a minute you're not you're not living your pope what's that <laughs> right i mean you know i can do a little living but still I, if i don't have to deal with that stress i don't right um but i try to when i talk to clients and potential clients like i used to tell people all the time i could have made a lot of money Back when I was doing a lot of music PR, right off rap boys and dope boy money because that's they that's who you know a lot of times that's who was fueling it. And right. I was like that nah, that's mm-hmm. not what I'm about. Like mm-hmm. that's cool. That I don't want you to bring me a bag of five. No, I don't want to even. I don't, no, I don't. I don't want to do nothing. No, I'm good. Right, right, right. Cool. Let me go over here and mess with this jazz artist because I like jazz music. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I like right. rap music too, but. Even with that, being selective of what type of music, what are they saying? I like I listen to my artists. If I have an artist come to me, mm-hmm. I'm gonna read the book in its entirety. Right. I'm going to listen to the whole album. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go search and see what you were doing the last two, three years and make sure I don't have to clean up somebody else's mess. You know right, what I mean? So right, I right. do my research on the potential clients just so I'm fully informed. Mm-hmm. And I think that um it definitely helps me keep a balance and keep knowing, my reputation alright. Know, knowing that when you do get your client um, and he or she is ideal, you know, how do you get alignment with them and you all achieve a goal together that you guys set out? And give us an example where you, you did that, like who you were great with, and, and it, maybe not the name if you mm-hmm. don't want to, but you guys set out on something and you actually accomplished or blew it out the, win- you know, blew it out the window there, you know? Oh, man. I have several, several examples, but... Um I'm really passionate about nonprofits. Mm-hmm. I mean, I love my entertainment. Right. And I enjoy it, of course. Um, but when I work with an entity that is doing really good things in the community, mm-hmm. or even a company that's doing great on their corporate social responsibility, meaning they're going to team up and do some great things in the community, right. I love that too. Because mm-hmm. um, a lot of times I think that there are people in companies that are doing great things. And nobody knows about it. Right. Um, and I love being able to share those type of stories. Mm-hmm. So, um, <clears throat> for instance, I work with, and everybody knows here in the local area, with Tanya Lewis with Children with a Vision. Right. Mm-hmm. And I've been working with her for years, mm-hmm. probably about 15. Mm-hmm. Okay, and shout, shout out to Tanya. That's Tanya, right, Tanya, that's my boo. <laughs> <laughs> what, now say it for everybody again. Does Tanya it? Lewis with Children with a Vision. She does oh, right. so vision. many things. And for instance, her... Um, her most recent endeavor, she does a grandmother's gala mm. for for Valentine's Day, and oh, she has 
she packs the house with about 500 people. That's awesome. 300 of them probably your grandmothers. Mm-hmm. Wow. And um, the first time we did it, or actually the last two years when I was on board for it, our oldest honoree was Miss Vonsell Dry. Miss Vonsell Dry is 112 now. Ooh. Oh. Right. And she's wow. still in her right mind. Mm-hmm. Still can speak to you, say, I'm enjoying my birthday, have her a sangria, and have a good time. <laughs> time. Yeah. Literally, you know. Uh. And so... Allow you know being a, being able to tell Miss Vonsell's story to get media to come out and and sit and talk with her mm-hmm. um, and just you know for people mm-hmm. people are like what she lives here in Tampa like right. yes she's right that's here so with happy. she is a treasure to our community that's exactly do you know how many things she can talk about that's what I was just getting ready to say because <laughs> that that's a story you know that's a story within a story absolutely right and that's that's exciting for you because in public relations that's what that's what you do yep. Which is the flip side, right? Uh-huh. So, you know, in my field, and you know this, Kevin, mm-hmm. being, you know, working with the NBA, the negative side. Oh, yeah. Where the guys yeah. don't want to, guys and girls don't want to get up and do the rate and, and, and come do an interview or tell their story. Mm-hmm. But yet you've worked very hard for them. But before we jump into that, we getting ready to go on break again with Esteban on the one and twos. <laughs> Once again, this is Power Moves. Where yes. celebrities, athletes, key influential executives share how they make money, money. how they attract power, power, and how they earn respect. respect. We're going to we'll see right you after back. the break. Hold tight. Take us out. It's the bond. This is Trina Johnson with Caldwell Banker Real Estate, the real estate agent you've been looking for. If you want top dollar for your home or you're looking to make a purchase, call me at 813-244-6953. Again, 813-244-6953 and let me list your home. This is Linda Archie with Tayu Temple United Methodist Church. Join us every first and third Saturday of the month at the Village Market East Tampa, 3206 North Sanchez Street. Free parking, free admission, fresh produce, live entertainment, vendor shopping, and delicious cooked food. Join us every first and third Saturday of the month, beginning June 22nd. For vendor information, call me, 1-888-991-2502. CRA in In Touch News or Florida Sentinel. Please call me at 1-888-991-2502. The Village Market at East Tampa, 3206 North Sanchez Street. In Touch Radio, where you can listen to a cruising flow of smooth soul and jazz. Today's R&B, a fun touch of hip-hop and gospel. All my music on one station. Giving you a buffet of music, news, and entertainment. We're In Touch Radio. We're back, we're back, we're yes, back. Yes, yes, Join us for Power Move. We're here with Keisha of Picket. We are. We are so glad for you to be here with us Thank today. You. I mean, shout out to everybody. You, you got a quick shout out for somebody who's looking and listening oh, to you. Oh, well, well that's, right, that's right. Hey, Tia. Hey, Margaret. Margaret Evans is watching, and that's my honey bunch. She's out in L.A. Honey bunch. Yeah. <laughs> that's my <laughs> That's my soror. She's the reason I'm a Delta. <laughs> We gotta give us a love. We gotta get they're hanging in with you. I see your your phone lighting up over yes. there. So let's, <laughs> let's 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 jump back into this because we got so much to cover and we want to make sure we do a great job getting your story out. So there's a huge you know difference in PR. I imagine because you're you're an expert at this. There's a way to approach it and a way not to, mm-hmm. and it's different for different industries. So. Uh, is there a difference between a branding, um, you know, a company in terms of public relations company and a corporate communications company? What's 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 the difference and what's the value in doing them, you know, differently? Well, I don't at the end of the day, our functions are about the same, mm-hmm. um, except within a, you know, there are different uh, facets of PR within a corporation. Right. Sometimes you have your internal communications uh, mm-hmm. person because if you're in a company large enough, you need to make sure that the 
the messaging, mm-hmm. all right, um, internally is in, is is on the same page, right? Cohesive, right? Right. right. I right. Used to, to say mm-hmm. what messaging for people who when mm-hmm. you say okay, our messaging, what does that mean? And why is that important? Yeah. Well, and and mm-hmm. I'm going to give you a two part question. Yep. Why is that important? And and can a small business owner benefit from that? Mm-hmm. From PR. From, from internal. Oh, internal. internal, internal absolutely. Messaging. So, um, for instance, if I always use this example. If uh, the two of you were in two separate elevators mm-hmm. and someone asked you what is Power Moves about, right. your mm-hmm. answer should be very the same. Should be very your different. elevator right. pitch, your 30-second should be the same. Mm-hmm. There should not be a variation. Everybody should be clear when they get off that elevator. And if those two people that talk to you talk to each other, they'll be like, oh, yeah, mm-hmm. I got it. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So you want to be clear and concise. you know. So be, you know, having an internal person allows you to... Um, you know, come up with what your company, your brand feels like, what it looks like. Mm-hmm. Um, a brand is not just a logo. Right. Understand, right? right? <laughs> That's right. <Yeah. laughs> it is not a logo. It's a feeling. It's, mm-hmm. it's what people get when they see Power Moves or whatever company or entity you're working with. It's what yeah. they feel. It's down to the color of your logo. It's the 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 font. Mm-hmm. It's the, you know... Uh, the mission the statement, mission statement. Mm-hmm. it's all of that is included in branding and right. you'll find more of that in a, your corporate settings you mm-hmm. know what i mean um on an individual side obviously if you're an entity an organization or a, a, you know individual that's looking for pr or right. a publicist that's a little bit different mm-hmm. you might not do all the things but you do incorporate most of the things i, I don't think there is a huge vast difference in what i do um it just depends on the client and what I'm doing, who I'm doing it for. Right. You know, I've worked, I've been contracted for a corporate corporation before and mm-hmm. I've come in and said, okay, we're going to do a whole branding overall. Like they want to change the whole image of things. Mm-hmm. Then, okay, what do you want people to know you for? Right. Let's talk about that. And it's extensive. It's a lot of research. It's focus groups sometimes. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. you know, you know, sending out stuff for your, you know, if you're, I've worked with a, quite a few um, higher education universities and things mm-hmm. like that to help them with their branding. Um, it's, it's a lot of work to really get down to because at the end of the day, you're hopefully you're not going to go rebrand again in five years. Right. You want this brand to stick around. You want yeah. people to, to really, really feel it. I like that as a takeaway. It, you know, you should always walk away with what do you want to be known for? Right? Absolutely. That's number one. So number two, going back to the question before the break, what happens when the person you've helped develop into what are you going to be known for and you set up certain things mm-hmm. and then they don't follow through? What's what's that like? <laughs> um, for me, it's like firing them. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. With no refund. Mm. <laughs> because, no, no, no. no if no. I work hard... And I, this is my reputation. Mm-hmm. And I've well. had this happen before right. where um, I've set up interviews and, you know, have things, you know, scheduled for someone and they don't show up or they're not as cooperative or mm-hmm. I'm like, what? wait a minute. <laughs> right. I, I worked hard for this over sure. this year. You, you one person mm-hmm. are not going to stop my train because right. it takes, as we know, it takes a long time for you to build up their reputation. Yeah. It takes right. a second for to it to go away, it. Mm-hmm. to lose it. And so, you know, I've had that happen and because of the relationships I'm able to go to my ally and say hey look I apologize mm-hmm. how can I make this right yeah, I, you know there I'm not gonna make excuses mm-hmm. it is what it is they didn't show up they didn't do it that the way what we agreed upon I'm done like mm-hmm. you have maybe twice to do that to me mm-hmm. and that's it right that's mm-hmm. it like I, there there is because I can't afford it and you're not paying me enough to risk it mm-hmm. right you know what i mean so that, and that's and that's how important public relations is right yeah. i mean because reputation is everything it is. and and it goes back to what do you want to be known for mm-hmm. in terms of that i mean because you know as we're all creatives right mm-hmm. and a lot of times we have how many balls juggling in the air yeah. how many ideas do we go to sleep and wake up like oh let me write this down yeah. let me be so this. right because mm-hmm. i mean, the, I mean that, sh- do this, let's yes. do this oh i could do this this will be great blah, blah blah but if you have a person in place to help you manage that sure so you know joel knows if he sends somebody new to me i'm like okay there's 10 ideas and they're all great right which two are we going to focus on focus on yeah. Maybe three, but sure. which two do we want to really focus on? Give our attention to, give our want our hundred percent all, all of our effort to make this thing blow up the way we want it want to, it and to. just you know, and exhaust our resources. Because if you do ten, 
something's gonna fall short. Right. right. Mostly of most of them are gonna fall short. You right. know. That's awesome. So so talk talk to us about um, kind of two parts here. Um, what inspires you, and how do you stay inspired in the work that you do? And then what what are you working on now? You know. So you know what. Um, what inspires me? Uh, I'm naturally an extrovert. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we right? know that. <laughs> what do you mean? I love being a connector. Okay. That's just, I just love being able to, to see a vision or take somebody's vision, truly believe in it and help them grow and mm-hmm. make it what they want it to be. Right. Um, I mean, that's your gift. That's my gift. Mm. That's my gift. I love to write. I'm a natural. I think I'm a pretty good writer. Naturally a writer. But mm-hmm. I love connecting with people. There's nothing like it. Just being mm-hmm. able to build and foster relationships with people and making sure that whatever resources you can you provide for them, that you do that. I love that. Because when I you, we walked in together and we're like, we met. Uh-huh. <laughs> and it was it was it was natural. We actually met at the end of the program and I I said I got to meet that lady. Oh, that's um, nice. Um because you had an energy and you could tell you were the butterfly in the room. Oh. <laughs> they make and me blush y'all. People were like I got to get your newsletter. Oh yeah. She's right. put that back out again. Girl, that's some good information. Yes, you're right. So oh man. It was it was really authentic and you could tell you were wanting to put that out for the people. So You know what? Were connected. So and you're living your truth. I, really I am. That. And and the bl- Black in the Bay is what what we're f- referring to as far sure. as my newsletter. Mm-hmm. And Black in the Bay is a passion project. Yeah. I started that thing 11 years ago. Mm. And people are like oh, like, I don't do a lot of marketing for it. Right. I just don't, you know, yeah. because I really enjoy just walking up to people and saying, hey, are you on Black of the Bay? I just like the personal touch. That's right. Versus giving out a bunch of cards at an event. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's cool and I probably could get more people, but I find that people truly, truly feel like they're my family. Right. When I'm writing the newsletter, people are like, oh my goodness, how's that baby? Oh my goodness, greatest. <laughs> and I'm just like, hi. You know, I just, I just love it. And so I choose not to do a massive marketing type situation. I'd rather be at an, an event where it's natural and I just walk up to you, oh, you're black, you're black and you live in the Bay, black in the Bay, <laughs> you need right. to be on, you know what I'm saying? So, and it's, it. exactly. Yeah. And I love it. And, and I tell people all the time, and I treat y'all like family. Y'all know if I'm gone for a month, it's because I'm busy, but I still love y'all. Like, That's yeah, right. I'll be back in a minute. So, you know, look out for the newsletter next week. I'm writing it already. All right. We so. can't wait. We can't wait. <laughs> so share with us, you know, mm-hmm. how, how has social media made your job either easier or harder? Man, <laughs> that's like a double-edged sword. That's, Let me tell you, social media is something else. Mm-hmm. Now, it's a gift and a curse, yes. as we all know, right? Wow. Right. For PR, um, it's it's a we have to use it. Right. It is. It, you can't go around it. Yep. I'm not the best at it, mm-hmm. and I will tell people that any day. I'm not the best at it. I can help you create the content or whatever, but social media is not just about posting. Mm-hmm. It's about being engaging. Right. Yes. Right, right. Right. And so when you're trying to build your brand, you're trying to build your reputation, you have to just you have to engage people. You have to figure out what times they're listening. What time should you post? What should you post? Mm-hmm. Um, how long should it be? You know, it's a lot of things that go into it. So, yes, I, I am glad that social media is here. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, for the good things that it could create. Mm-hmm. But it could just be devastating at the same time. Right. Because all it takes <laughs> is a push of a button a million people got it in like an hour that's right that's right and, and then, it's hard and then you're to back real- to crisis management <laughs> listen yeah. i may i do crisis management for a very big global company okay that i won't mention and a lot of crisis <laughs> right right and it's hard to re- that social media is hard to reel that thing in <laughs> but the thing is what people are in when you're dealing with a crisis situation People want to see that, one, you are taking responsibility for whatever wrong that may have been caused. Mm-hmm. That you're fast. Right. When reacting, you're not waiting. Mm-hmm. Right? Because people don't like to wait. That's if right. If you've done something, you they deem it as, oh, my gosh, mm-hmm. you better speak up. And you better speak up fast. fast. You know what I mean? So I tell people like that, don't wait. Be proactive. You know, say what you need to say. We'll deal with it after that. But we got to make some type of statement. We got to say something Mm -hmm. so that people know that you are hearing them and that you recognize that there's an issue. Right. You know what I mean? Especially in the virtual world, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So with with that being said, tell us a little bit about your your current project, 
um, that you, you know your most recent project oh. in which you was you was out in L.A. <laughs> doing, doing your thing, La La yes, Land. Yes, in La La Land. So I, you know what? I went to Los Angeles a couple weeks, almost a couple week, weeks ago. I'm working on um, David Makes Man. Mm-hmm. Um, with Paragon Film, Paragon Film Music is my client. Okay. Um, Paragon Film Music. Shout out to Jabari Ali and, and Lyric T. Pring, um, music coordinator, music supervisors. Um, they take music and place it in shows and films, which is awesome because a lot of times, you know, we educate artists like, you know, the radio is great, but that's not your only option with that's your right. music. That's right. So um, we are working on David Makes Man. Uh, he was a music supervisor on that project. I'm the music publicist for the project. Mm-hmm. And if you haven't seen it, it's on OWN. It's Oprah's new baby. It's her okay. new show. That's right. That's right. Oh, David, Makes Man. David Makes Man. It comes on on Wednesday Wednesdays. nights at 10. Okay. That's right. Yep. And um, the project is, you know, it's another one of those projects that's, that we're really passionate about. David Makes Man, um, it's a show that shows black boyhood you know transition from boy to man mm-hmm. in a light that we I don't think we've ever seen on television that's right Interesting. you know yeah, what I mean it's a great show it is a great it's an awesome show I'm not, I'm it's so many it things to unpack on. yeah because you know coming from so I can relate because born and raised in Brooklyn went to private yeah. you know, parochial school mm-hmm. right so and then uh, and going into high school I went to a, a all Caucasian high school mm-hmm. and so kind of dealing with that adjustment that code switching well yeah mm-hmm. it was big time so wow. you know with that being said we're going to touch on that and yeah, after, come back with another at the part. end yeah. at the end of the break yeah. alright so once again yeah, this is Power Kevin. Moves with my partner in crime Kevin Carr with yeah. Pro the CEO and Mr. Joel Sylvain <laughs> Keisha Pickett with I mean Keisha Boy <laughs> man <laughs> you know we know each other so it. long yeah. man let's go to the break come let's on, go to the break <laughs> That's right. Power move. Power move. That's the bond. Take it away. Take it us out. Rock us out. That's the bond. Appreciate (laughs) you. in a car crash call ricky don't know what to do ask ricky we will connect you with a lawyer and doctor experience in auto accident injuries call ricky at 844-361-7425 after an auto accident you have 14 days to seek medical attention you may be in pain so call ricky ask ricky for your best options 844-361-7425 call ricky ask ricky is a legal and medical referral service the lawyers in our network pay to receive referrals Hi, I'm Donald L. Dowridge Jr., your motivational guru. This is the DLD Motivational Moment. You got up this morning. You got up this morning. Eyes sneaking open as the feet hit the floor. Got to thank God for the rise this day. The stove perking the smell of nutrition. Get to your destination with planned unselfish acts. Bulletin board read, do you have any to spare? Happiness and understanding. We all have experienced that one phone call, family member, co-worker, friend has passed on. We don't know our last evening or morning. Get up. Help someone out. Now walk it out. You got up this morning. This has been the DLD Motivational Moment. You can reach out to DLD at DLD28-2002 at yahoo.com or 813-394-5875. When it comes to reality radio, everyone is a star. I know that's right. On your smooth soul and R&B station. On the World Wide Web. Access Access granted. granted. In Touch Radio. All right, all right. So we back, we back. We back, we back. Appreciate you, Esteban, rocking us in. So, Miss Boyd. Yes. <laughs> Mrs. Mrs. Yes. Yes, got to give the props there. <laughs> we're, we're, we're excited to have you. Um, but our, my next question, I, you know, I think everybody would love this opportunity. So I'm going to ask you, in your career, you got to work with the GOAT. In yeah. terms of PR and communication, yes, I'm talking about Oprah, the queen. Um, what was it like um, to work with her? I, I mean, and at first, did you, when you got your PR firm going, mm-hmm. did you envision your business, little old you, mm-hmm. will be working with 
huge, gigantic, you know, mega icon, Oprah's company. And what was that like? You know what? I have to say this. Um, I didn't. Well, no, I'm not going to say that I didn't um, because I have I have I have envisioned that I would be in front of Oprah and say, hire me like I would assign. <laughs> like, hire me. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Literally, like, right. hire me. So to be able to work with 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 own communications and work on a project that Oprah is producing is a dream come true. Mm-hmm. It truly is. Um, and to meet her last or the week before was amazing because she was so welcoming mm-hmm. and so like, hey, how are you? Oh, you work with the music. Like sister girl. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she was like, oh, well, you thank you guys for such a great job on the music. You know, she, we were taking pictures. They was like, hold on, it's the music team. I was like, yes, Oprah, you know, this is great. You know, and you know, uh, it's it's connections, mm-hmm. relationships. Okay. okay. Um, like I said, with Jabari, with Paragon Film Music, I live in Tampa. All this stuff is taking place and happening in Hollywood. People are like, how are you? How are you involved in such projects and you live in Tampa? Right, right. right. Like, because my people take me with them. That's right. right. Because so, of relationships. because of relationships. It's, rela- it's relationships, and I don't have to live in LA to be involved. All mm-hmm. I need is my computer, mm-hmm. my phone, mm-hmm. and be available to fly to when I need, need to. to That's right. Exactly. So, um, you know, I think this will be a staple project that will definitely help elevate my, you know, company Mm -hmm. and the things that I can do. Um, And I'm looking forward to some great, great things in the future because of it, for sure. Well, we we, we definitely, I mean, I'm definitely seeing that. I mean, and that's what I love. And uh, I'm going to, I'm going to give you two power questions. Okay. Well, three probably, but the first one is why Tampa? What's, what's, what do you, what do you, what's, special about Tampa and, and and do you think that Tampa's getting enough notoriety that it deserves? Tampa so when I used to, when I moved to, I moved to LA two days after I graduated from FAMU. Mm-hmm. Like literally I graduated on the second, by the fifth I was in LA. Oh, right. Gone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> And I stayed there for about a year. I had been off and on because my mom was there. And um the company I was working for I'm 22 at the time, by mm-hmm. the way, and I almost moved to Hawaii because right. Dole wow. and Del Monte were my clients. Mm-hmm. I was doing agricultural PR okay. and communications before sure. I moved to Tampa. So they were that like, makes sense, fam. Yeah. You, <laughs> you know, you know oh, agriculture, PR, yeah. communications, but you know, it was Hawaii. crazy. <laughs> Hawaii, they were like, "You want to live in Hawaii?" I was like, "Do you know that ga- a gallon of milk is nine dollars?" No, I don't want to live in Hawaii. I'm good. Like, and my grandmother said, "It's a, too far of a flight." So no, yeah. and um, so they said, "Well." You know, we want an East Coast office. Pick a place. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay. So I picked Tampa because my dad is was retiring from the military. Right. Um, at uh, McDeal. And <clears throat> I said, well, I'll go there because I'm familiar with Florida. My dad's mm-hmm. there. I won't be completely by myself. Mm-hmm. And I've been here ever since. Right. So that's mm-hmm. why I chose Tampa. Um, no rhyme or reason besides my dad was here. You right. Know? Family. Um, and fa- yeah, family. Back mm-hmm. to family. And so mm-hmm. I've learned. Well, not. I've watched Tampa evolve mm-hmm. and grow and just the magnitude of growth that is going that's going on right now I'm like oh my yeah, god like it's, it's, this yeah, city is just oh, booming don't, yes. don't sleep mm-hmm. on Tampa yeah. because the entertainment and some of the global events and mm-hmm. sports like the Super Bowl in a, yes. couple, years, in a couple years that's the right Final yes. Four that's yes. right has been here women's and men's is going to be coming mm-hmm. we've hosted All Star for uh, NHL yep. that's we're right a great team here and, yeah. and we and, and we we're gonna be getting ready to pop off with esports right now mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so so that's team. that's coming you know from a from a global perspective and. Uh, you know, shouts out to Marcus Howard and the tag team and and David Glass over in Orlando at Orlando IX mm-hmm. um, bringing that. So th- there's a lot of undercurrents happening in this esports summit that's going to happen at USF mm-hmm. next month. But, you know, what's interesting is what you're mentioning. I don't think a lot of people know that story. In my opinion, mm-hmm. what, what are your thoughts? Because you're in the PR world. About the growth of Tampa? About the, the, the Tampa story. You know, why is why why should people come to Tampa? Well, you know what? I think that um, Tampa is an oppor- a place where people can grow. And mm-hmm. Millennials are choosing Tampa. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that, you know, people are like, oh, there's nothing to do. Well, there are things to do. Right. But they're not going to come knocking at your door. Yeah. Mm. So if you, cho- you, you know, if you want something to do, there's several things to do. There's organizations having events all the time. Um, if I wanted to go out 
at any time, there's something always going on. And mm-hmm. that's part of the reason why I put Black and the Bay together, too, mm-hmm. so people can know where to find people and where to go. Yeah. Um, shout out to Sherry Brown mm-hmm. over at Visit Tampa. All right. Um, that's right. That's my girl. Visit Tampa. Mm-hmm. Visit Tampa. She she is a beast. Like, she is making sure that our events and national things that are coming here are diverse. Mm-hmm. You have the Qs coming. You have the Deltas coming. There's a lot. The Shriners are here. I mean, she's making sure that, you know, that everybody and, and, and uh, the minority groups have their fair share, too, to that's come right. here to Tampa and see what we have to offer. Because we do have a lot to offer. And I think that... Over the, the next few years, people will start to really, really see. And when people come, it's just in-state visitations too, right? Because mm-hmm. people automatically think, oh, I'm going to visit Florida. I'm going to Miami. Miami. Right? Orlando. <laughs> you know, or Orlando. Orlando with the family. Exactly. Yeah. Orlando with the family yeah. and Miami to party. Correct. <laughs> but but I, Tampa I, has a great mix of both. That's yeah, right. That's and right. I think you're repping as these these bay this yeah. bay with these beaches, beaches. yes uh, and you yes. can get to relax on for real absolutely like you can step it up during the day and so, go see some magnificent so we're gonna do we're gonna do a, a, a quick 60 second because we can't really go on we're gonna wrap up the show right All okay right. so 60 seconds the whole jay-z nfl thing we said it from the beginning you know if you was if you was his pr mm-hmm. <laughs> She's busy right now. Yeah. She or he is. The whole yeah. team is busy. Yeah. They haven't gotten yeah. to sleep in three days. Mm-hmm. Right? Rock yeah, Nation Rock Nation. Is, is Rock so Nation, yeah. But bit. you know what? Just I think that, um, you know, it's a little sore spot for a lot of us. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's a business move. Right. We want to have a seat at the table. Um, I just hope to see the end result of what this is going to be. Is he going to be an owner? Is he going to, you know, is it his job to make sure Colin Kaepernick has a job? Mm. Is it like like we have? To, there's a lot to discuss. There's a lot of parts to this that we have to really, really sit and think mm. about. To you unpack. know, um, we gotta yeah, we got to unpack this, and we can't necessarily um, say, "Oh my God," we can't be all like mad at Jay. We can be. We can have our certain feelings, but we got to make sure we're seeing the full picture. So, mm-hmm. so what's interesting about that is, from a communication standpoint, because that was your major. Mm-hmm. Isn't it important to understand things from the point, the perspective of the other individual, and help them express their feel, express what they're really looking to intend, and and the importance of being more specific as opposed to correct being so general, right? Mm-hmm. And would you say that was probably the mistake that um was made? You know there? what? Um, it just depends. It just depends on if he's able to speak on things. Because some things you can't mm-hmm. speak on yet because there's a non-disclosure or yeah. there's an embargo and you can't say anything. Yeah. Um, or sometimes you have a leak and somebody has released it, so now you got to jump on it and try to catch what you can and prevent and and and, and be proactive as, as much as you can. So there you go. So that's the lot. power of PR. But so before we go, we gotta let people know how to oh interface with you, absolutely. consume you, become part of your family, your ecosystem. Absolutely. That's right. Give it to so, us. So give Listen, it to us. Picketpr.com, um, Instagram, Facebook. Pick a PR, pick a PR group. You can find me. Just Google me and I'll pop up. And uh, yeah. pick it, pick it, spell P I C K E T T P R, right? Yes. Pick it. All right. Yes. So that's another great show. Thank yes. you, In the Keisha books. Boyd. Keisha, we appreciate Mr. Kevin you. Carr, with yes. Pro Thanks, the CEO. Yes. Joel, appreciate you. That's right. Into power moves Stephane. with celebrities, yes. athletes, yeah. key influential executives share how they make money, money. how they attract power, power, and how they earn, earn respect. respect. See you next week, Much baby, love. baby. Thank Bye. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Welcome.